Hi, this is Simon Obstall and welcome to another tutorial for Blackmagic Fusion. And today we're going to be looking at making a double helix out of particles. And it's going to look something like this. And then it's going to do this. So I'm also going to do a version of this concept that uses 3D geometry instead of particles. And if this doesn't interest you, hopefully that will instead. But for now, let's get started on this one. So first of all, I'd like to create a particle source. So I'm going to add a fast noise. I'm going to set its size to 400 by 400. Come over to the noise, increase that contrast to say two. Come to the color, Let's have a quick look at it so you can see what I'm doing. We don't want any alpha transparency for that color one. So I'm going to set that to one. And then what I'm going to do is add a vortex. And let's have a look at that. Let's set the size to one and the power to negative 0.2. And then I'm going to add a circular mask to the fast noise. So click on the circular mask tool like that. And I'm going to set the width and height to one. Now what we can do is we can add a particle emitter. Let's move it over here. And we can also add a 3D renderer, particle renderer, I should say. And then when we switch the style of the particle emitter to bitmap, we can use our particle as the input source. So now we've got our blob of particles there. OK, let's come to the particle emitter controls. Uh, let's set the lifespan to a thousand, just to cover ourselves. And then I'm going to enter an expression for the number. So right click expression and I'm going to type if. So that's double I F open brackets time is less than 180 comma one comma zero close brackets. OK, so now what we're going to do is we're going to come over to the style and just adjust the size controls. I'm going to go for 0.25 size variance of 0.1. And then let's come to the region and set this all up. I'm just going to reduce that sphere size down to 0.01. We'll play with that a little bit later, but the larger the sphere size, the, the greater the uh, range of the emitter and actual actual fact and just where we're setting this up we want this to be very very small so I'm going to go for 0 0.01 and then what we're going to do is add expressions to the x y and z offsets so let's start with x right click expression I'm going to type sign open brackets time over 10 close brackets for the y I'm going to add expression time over 10 and for the Z expression, cos, open brackets, time over 10, close brackets. Oops, misspelt time there. And now, if I zoom out a little bit, you'll see we've actually got a, a spiral working here. And if I press play, the particles follow the spline. What I've permitted to do is increase my range here. So I'm going to increase that to 360 so we get a bit more playing time. Oops, and it keeps on going. And at 180, it stops. So now we've got one leg of our helix. So we could reverse the expressions to get the other leg. But I'm just going to do this quite simply. I'm going to add a 3D duplicator. And let's have a look at that. And what we need to do is simply add a Y rotation of 180. And now we get the double helix, both animating like so. We just turn on the lighting for this, make it less uh, gruesome. There we go. OK, so now we need to create the crossbars, the rungs of the of the the ladder, as it were. So to do that, I'm going to add an extra particle emitter. And I'm also going to copy that particle render, pipe the particle emitter out into that. And I'm also going to just uh, style bitmap so we can use the same image source. First of all, I'm going to set up my 
a number here. Again, let's set the lifespan to a thousand. And we're going to enter an expression again for the number. But it's going to be a slightly different one. So again, if that's double I, open brackets, time is less than 30, comma, one, comma, zero, close brackets. And so that's just going to omit for 30 frames. Next, I'm going to come to the Style tab and just going to adjust the um, size controls here. Just want a size variance of 0.1 for this one. And then finally, we can come to the region. Again, let's set that sphere down to 0.01. And then let's add an animation to the Z offset. So right click Expression. And we're going to do open brackets, time over 15, close brackets. And we're going to type minus one. So let's have a look at what that's doing. I'm just going to have to zoom in because it's quite small. It's creating this small line, which animates across like that. And now we can merge that with the rest of the scene. So I'm going to add a 3D merge after that. And we can pop this in here and see the two combined. So if we zoom in, we can see we've got that line running across like that between the, the two branches of the helix. So then again, we need to duplicate this to create all the different rungs. So I'm going to again add a 3D duplicate and I'm going to set the number of copies to 37, the time offset to negative five, we need to set the Y offset to 0.5. And now you'll see we've got our growing ladder. Uh, what it doesn't do though, is it doesn't follow the spin of the helix. So to do that, I'm just going to enter a rotation value in the Y and it's going to be negative 151.25. And now I think you can see we've got that following up like so. And we get to the top like that. So that's that's pretty much the technique. What I'd just like to do is add a rotation to the overall structure. So after that 3D merge, I'm going to add a 3D transform. And what we're going to do is we're going to add an expression to the Y rotation. So right click expression, and we're going to have time divided by three. And I think you can see now that the whole structure slowly rotates. We can increase that speed by reducing this multiplier. So time divided by two, it's going to go faster. Let's go with that. Now let's add a uh, camera. So what I'm going to do is add a new 3D merge. And to this, we can add a camera. So camera there, and then let's add to the output of the 3D merge, a 3D renderer. And let's also add a background. And that's rendering over the top of the background. Or rather, we've got that the wrong way around. We need to swap that. That's Command T on the Mac. Uh, and now we just need to move the camera. So I'm going to move it out to 20. And then let's just add some rotation like that. And let's just move it down on Y. Not going to get carried away here. Just want to be able to see what's going on. And let's, let's just change the color of that background a bit. So it's not just black. We could also add some lights to this, but that's going beyond what I want to do with this tutorial. I just really want to explain the basic structure of the thing. So let's look at a few more things we can do. At the moment, the particles are pretty much like a string. We've got a bit of size variance, but they're all kind of packed uniformly together. But if we wanted a kind of a looser structure, there's a couple of different things we could do, one of which is to come over and increase the region size. So I'm, I'm selecting that main helix. Uh, we set that down to 0 0.01. But if we were to set that to 0.25, for example, you'll see that they're much more loosely packed. Or we could do it another way. So set that back to down, down to 0 0.01. We could come over to the master controls and we could set the position variance, and it does more or less the same thing. So let's stick with that. So that looks like this now. And that's probably kind of more interesting in a kind of a sciencey sort of way. 
Another thing I'd like to do is have the particles grow rather than be the same size at birth. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come to the Style tab. Again, I'm looking at the main helix here. And look at the size controls. So open those up if they're not open. And size over life. And I'm just going to click here randomly to set a new keyframe there. I'm going to draw around the first one and hit E to be able to edit it. And I want to set this value to 0.1. So that's the out value. So that means at time zero, the size will be 0.1. And then I'm going to draw around the second one and hit E to edit it. And let's make that time 0.01. So I want them to be growing pretty fast. Bearing in mind our lifespan is about 1,000. So they end up looking like this which I think is a lot more interesting. And there's one more thing I'd like to try, and that's to add a particle turbulence so that the particles fly apart at a predetermined time. So I'm going to select the emitter there, add a particle turbulence. And what, what I'm going to do is to link those three uh, strength values together. So equals and then pick with the x and then equals and then pick with the x so i can just use the x value to create my animation so i'm going to set it to zero and i think i'm going to come to something like frame 240 keyframe that at zero step forward to about 250 and i'm going to set that to five if we preview that you'll see they fly apart at that point. So let's copy that onto the other emitter. So Command C, select the other emitter, Command V. Now I'm just going to temporarily remove the main helix so we can have a look at a little bit of a problem we have here. So I'm going to come to the, let's view the actual 3D merge here. So the particles fly apart, as you can see, but they don't all fly apart and they sort of f fly apart progressively. Now, if you're wondering what the reason for that is, it's that we've got a time offset on the duplicator and we've got a time offset of five. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come to 220 and I'm going to keyframe that there. Then I'm going to step forward one frame and set that time offset to zero. And now if we preview that, everything splits apart together. And that's going to give us the result we need. And so we can reattach our main helix and look at the final result. It's going to look something like this. So it all assembles nicely. And it all disperses at the same time, uniformly. So that's pretty much the project completed. Obviously, you'll, you'll want to do all sorts of fancy stuff with cameras and lights and whatever, but I won't, let's not go into that here. I hope that's given you enough to, to get started, give it a little bit of inspiration for this. Uh, thanks very much indeed for watching, and I hope to see you again another time, and hopefully on the other version of this, where we'll build the double helix in 3D. So, see you then.